Hi friends, I hope y'all have had a blessed day today. Uh, before I call it a night, I wanted to cover some scripture with you. So if you would get your Bible and turn to 2 Timothy, and we're going to read a few, uh, few verses. And before I go any further, um, this has been going on around in my mind for the last couple of days and I just wanted to share it with you. Um, for those of you that would like to have a correspondence with me on the study, the in-depth study of God's Word, taking a verse at a time, uh, some a couple of verses, whatever it, the verses it takes to, uh, to have the whole uh, train of thought uh, if you will email me at millionforchrist at aol.com, um, I'm going to call it the Million for Christ School of Ministry. And the whole point of this correspondence between me and you is to teach us in depth the study of God's Word. Uh, and the more of God's Word we get in us and that we actually understand it, the more we can minister the way that Christ trained those men and the revelations that these men received, which is what we have in the New Testament. And a couple of things that I want to touch on really quick, and I mean uh, so that I can call it a night and go on to bed, but is this there's a lot of people saying okay if we're going to be gone by the 23rd or maybe no later than the 30th because the 30th is Yom Kippur which is uh, the end of basically the very end of the Jubilee uh, some say the Jubilee ends on the Feast of Trumpets some say it ends on Yom Kippur. So, just depends on uh, which way you look at it or the belief that the Jews have. But in any case, um, September the 30th, oh, I see my cat back there. <laughs> anyway, uh, September the 30th uh, is the end. So, let's say we're still here October the 1st. You know, I have people saying, why do you want to have a TV ministry if we're going to be gone? Well, I'm going to tell you the reason why. See, many of you may not be uh, the age that I am. Uh, I've been looking for the Lord literally since uh, probably 1980 was the first year that we really thought that Jesus might come back in 1980, 80 or 81. Then it was 88. And then it just went on and on. And so many times just things seemed just right. And he still didn't come. And friend, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, like, like I've said in many of my videos in my charts, everything is just lining up so perfectly for the Lord to come back this month. But there is that big if. What if he doesn't? What do we do then? What are we going to do if on the 25th or October the 1st, we're still on this earth? What happens then? Well, beside the fact that we'll all be mocked at and scoffed, we still have a ministry to fulfill. We must do the ministry which Jesus Christ gave us. Well, what ministry was that, Asa? Jesus told those men, go into all the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are to minister and bring others into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
So why, why do I want a TV ministry? Like I've already said, and I hope y'all listen to the whole video, is so that if by chance we are on this earth still, like I said before, I, I am going to turn the level up full blast. As much as Jesus will allow me, I'm going to minister harder than I ever have before. And that's the reason why I want to do this Million for Christ School of Ministry so that we can learn the word together where we correspond with each other. And I think that's just the best way to do it. Now, if a group of y'all want to like have a conference call or get on the computer and you know all get in a, in a chat room and do it that way, that's fine. But those of you that want to learn the deeper truths of God's word, Email me at millionforchrist at aol.com. Okay. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, I want you to listen to Paul. Paul. Paul knew he was coming to his end. Like we think and believe and hope that we're coming to our end. Paul said this to Timothy, For I am now ready, ready, to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand I have fought a good fight I have finished my course I have kept the faith henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Praise God. I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong. All those who love his appearing. See, he didn't say all those who love his return. See, Paul received a mystery. Paul received a revelation that Jesus Christ, as he promised the 12 disciples, he is going to return in the clouds to take us home to the Father's house that he went away to make a place for us. And then we'll have the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we will come back for his second coming to earth where he destroys the armies in the valley of Megiddo and then he sets his feet down on the Mount of Olives and that mountain splits but here's the point I want to drive home Paul fought a good fight he finished his course he kept the faith and what I want us to understand, as we realize we're getting closer and closer to the Lord's return, we must continue to fight until <laughs> we have finished the course. We've not finished the course yet, friend. Today is, uh, actually it's 1.05 a.m. And it is the 15th of January. The 15th, uh, the 15th of January. That shows you how tired I am. It is the 15th of September. Now you think of that, the 15th, and we're looking for the 21st. What's that, six days away? Or the 23rd, which is seven days away. And see, I'll, I, I might make a video tomorrow, and if I do, I will title it probably seven days to the rapture. And if you notice, I put question marks. I'm not saying that the rapture 
will happen in seven days. I'm saying seven days till the rapture, question mark. It's a question. Are we seven days away? And like today, I made one says eight days. And if we're eight days away from the rapture, like the Bible says, as we see the day approaching, how much more should we be in holy conversation? In other words, as we know, we're getting closer to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shouldn't we purge ourselves of the things of the world and even become more holy in our living? Because the word conversation means the way of life. Just think of that. Flip back over here, if you have to flip, to chapter 2 of 2 Timothy. Now this morning, I talked about uh, the iPhones and Facebook. How everything is about me. It's all about me. Now, I want you to listen to what um, Paul is instructing Timothy. And see, friend, here's a good way to read God's Word. When Paul is talking to Timothy, just pretend that he's talking to you. When Jesus is talking to the 12 disciples, pretend that he's talking to you. Okay? I mean, when he is telling us something, listen to this. Starting in verse 1. Chapter 2, verse 1 of 2 Timothy. Paul said, Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In all things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit you to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Now listen to this. <laughs> you want a scripture to print out on your computer and to put on your refrigerator? Here's a good one. Or to put on your mirror where you shave or you you know, get ready for work each morning? Listen to this. You therefore, you therefore, Timothy, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. A good soldier. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life so that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Do you realize that the men and the women that are in the military are not allowed to get entangled day after day after day with the affairs of life? Not until they first got them trained and then they sometimes will not even let those men and women even go off a base because they want to keep their minds focused on the war and on their job and their position to keep the country safe. And friend, you and I, we are in a war. We are in a battle against Satan. And it says that we should endure hardness. Endure hardness. That means we're going to endure hard times. We're going to go through hard times. And we must endure hard times. Well, we must endure hard times. Some of us, we don't go through hard times. We got it good. I mean, we really got it good. Especially, you know, in some countries of the world, we got it great. Man, we are living on easy street. But these poor people over here in the Middle East, God bless them. I hope their mansions is a mile high for the amount that they have suffered here on earth. 
praise God, these poor people. You know what I'm talking about. It says, no man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Now listen to this. Starting down here in verse 11, it says, It is a faithful saying, because if we are dead with him, we will also live with him. If we suffer, we will also reign with him. <laughs> if we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abides or remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Praise God. There's people that <laughs> do not believe. I had one lady just flat want to tell me that Jesus Christ is not God. That, that Jesus is lower than God. And, and, and I'm just going to tell you, uh, if you doubt for any minute that Jesus Christ is not God. Now, see, the problem with that is this. In our minds, we think God, God. There's one God. And then there's Jesus and the Holy Spirit. No, no. There's one God. And that one God reveals himself to us as the Father, as the Son, and as the Holy Spirit. And that's where people don't understand. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You have the Father, the Father, who we pray to. You have Jesus, who we pray in the name of Jesus to the Father, who is our Savior, with the holes in his hands and his feet. And then you have God, the Holy Spirit, who is the power of the Godhead, who lives in us and gives us comfort and revelation and knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. See, the Bible says in the Old Testament that God, the Father, is a fire from the loins up and a fire from the loins down. And think of this. You will read, and I think, I better not say because I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. But it might be in Daniel, but I'm not sure. Anyway, it talks about the Ancient of Days and how the Lord came to the Ancient of Days and judgment was made in favor for the people of God. Refer, it might be in Daniel, referring to the, the times uh, of Revelation. But here's the thing. See, when, when, you, when we read the word God, See, that word needs to really be translated the Father or Yahweh or Elohim. It needs to uh, signify in your mind we're talking about the Father. And like I said in Hebrews, it plainly says that Jesus is the express image of God. And can you, can you imagine us, a person who does not believe that Jesus is God? Jesus is not God the Father, and that's where the problem is. See, they say Jesus isn't God. Now, what you're saying is Jesus isn't God the Father, and that's true. Jesus is not God the Father. Jesus is God the Son, God the Savior. 
but he is still God. No, that can't be, Asa. You just, you just don't understand, Asa. Oh, I do understand. There is one God, one God, who manifests himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Give you an example. You see me? I'm Asa. To my wife, to my wife, I am husband. <laughs> I'm husband. To you, I'm friend. To my son, I'm daddy. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a friend. I'm a employee. But there is one me. But I am manifested and I play the role of and I am the role of a father, a husband, an associate, a friend, a brother. I'm a brother. I'm a granddaddy. But there's only me. And what really messes with our mind is this. How can you have God the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit? You know, it's, I wish I had, well, it's like this. It's like, you see these three? There's three right there. But these, these three are one. One. There's one God. One God. But you have the Father sits on the throne. The Son sits at his right hand. And the Holy Spirit who is on the earth. There's three. Now can you see when the Holy Spirit <laughs> raptures us up to the throne and these people see Jesus at the right hand of the Father and these people say God would you please tell us and tell everybody else here that Jesus is not God if that was even possible, I wonder if the Father would just laugh at our stupidity and our lack of revelation of his holy word. No, the minute we are raptured, the minute we are transformed, the minute we are put in our glorified bodies and then we have the mind of Christ, we will then know as he is known. And we will know that he is God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, three in one. And you can believe it or not, but the Bible plainly says, If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. And I'm going to promise you, I am not denying Jesus on anything. I can tell you that now. I, Jesus is Savior. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Christ. Jesus is the anointed one. Praise God. He's my friend. He's my Savior. He is the lover of my soul. He loves me and loves you so much he died for us. I am not denying him in any way, any shape, any form. Read Hebrews. You will realize what God the Father thinks of his son. And what a lot of people don't understand is when Jesus said, No man knows the day nor the hour, but my father only, they don't realize that at that moment, 
Jesus had to strip himself and become like a man with a brain. Okay? With a brain. And he had to strip himself of all of the privileges of being in the connection to the point to where, I mean, he literally had to, to make this thing right, he had to walk like you and I walked. Because, friend, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ, if he had not stripped himself, the minute that they would have hit him with the cat of nine tails, his body wouldn't have suffered. They would not have been able to nail the nails through his hands if he had the godness, if I can say that word, in him. In fact, <laughs> he would have walked around this earth and everybody would have died because the Bible plainly says that sin cannot dwell in God's holy presence. Let me tell you, when Jesus Christ took those men up on the Mount of Transfiguration, those men got to see a glimpse of the glory of Christ. I tell you, I did not mean to get off on that, but I'm telling you that is good Bible understanding of who Christ is. Let's go on real quick so I can end this video. Fourteen. Now listen carefully. You know how people, like when I had that, uh, <laughs> that conversation with the atheist about five weeks ago, and I told him I am not going to be answering questions that I can't, that I, there's no way I can know the answer. Listen to this. It says, of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, <laughs> charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words. Oh, my gosh, that they strive not about words. How many times have you heard or seen people through post get in arguments? The word strive means to, it ain't necessarily means to fight. But it means it's kind of like you arguing and you're striving with each other. You're, you're in a difficult situation here. You're striving with each other about words. And it says to no profit. You can sit there and argue all you want about words. Paul says it's to no profit. And it says, but it's to the subverting of those who are listening, the hearer. And then he says this. Here's how you solve that foolishness. Study to show yourself approved unto God. You are a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then he says this, very important instructions, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. If I would have tried to answer these questions that he kept throwing at me, already knowing he's an unbeliever, already knowing he's an atheist, there's no way I can answer because what he wants to or wanted to try to do is make me like, uh, you know, come to the point where I say, yeah, you know, there's no, there, there's no proof of God. 
when the very fact that, that he's able to breathe, when the Bible says in the Old Testament that God owns our very breath. God owns our breath. And he has the hairs on your head numbered. <laughs> there's coming a day, my friend, when there's going to be a massive, rude awakening. Not just for the unbelievers and atheists, even for Christians. There's a lot of us, man, we're going to be in for a rude awakening when we realize just how far off we have missed the mark that Christ wanted us to walk. He said this is a straight and narrow path. God wants us to walk the walk that Jesus Christ walked. He wants us to talk the talk that Jesus Christ taught. And he wants us to love the way that Jesus loved. <clears throat> Verse 21, friend, and I'm about to end this video probably within three or four minutes. Verse 21. Nope. Let's go back to verse 19. Have to go back to verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. The foundation of God. What is the foundation of God? <laughs> Jesus Christ is the foundation of God. Remember Jesus said, if any man builds upon this foundation, you dig down and, and, and you dig deep and build on this foundation, the winds, the rains, and the storms shall beat upon your house and it will not fall because it is built on the foundation. It is built on the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the rock. He is the foundation of God. And when you stand on Christ, my friend, <laughs> you are standing on the solid rock. Yeah, you know, that's an old gospel song. You ought to look it up, standing on the solid rock. That's a good song. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. And do you belong to Jesus? Do you belong to Jesus? It says that he knows those who are his. Do you belong to Jesus? Do I belong to Jesus? Listen to what Paul tells Timothy if you belong to Jesus. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from it. You leave it. You walk away from it. When you depart from a town, you get in your car and you drive away. When you depart from your house, you walk outside and you leave. If you name the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. You hear these people? I had a sister ask me, can a person be saved and go out and live in willful sin and just party and just, just live in a sinful life? I said, I doubt very seriously they were really born again to begin with. Because conviction should be tearing them up. Let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, we are the house of God. In a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he will be a vessel unto honor, 
sanctified, and meet, the word meet, means suitable, ready for. If you are meet, that means you are suitable and ready to be used. He will be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. You're, you will be prepared to do every good work that God the Father wants you to walk in. And if you will read verse 22 all the way through, you will find a lot of things we need to purge ourselves from. And to wind this up, let me show you this. <laughs> I, I got to read this. It's just too good. Verse 22, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness. Think of this, follow, follow after righteousness, faith, love, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. God looks at our hearts. But foolish and unlearned questions, that's what I was avoiding with uh godless cranium but foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strifes and the servant of the lord must not strive that's why i tell people when they get going i said look I, I, I ain't gonna argue with you i i ain't gonna argue and i'm just gonna tell you straight up when people get on my videos and they start striving with you, my friends, and start giving y'all aggravation, Psh, goodbye. You don't see them no more. I, do, I just block their comments. You won't hear from them no more. I mean, I, you know what? I don't have space, nor do we have time, nor the energy, nor to be obedient to God's word, are we going to sit there and strive and argue with these unbelievers? Now, you know what? If they want to engage in a conversation and they really want to learn from us, that's fine. But if all they want to do is just cause us heartache and, and, and makes stupid, stupid comments just to be aggravating, mm -mm, ain't got time for them. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, able to teach, patient, and meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And what is the truth? Truth is Jesus Christ is Lord. He's our Savior and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, and they are taken captive by the devil at his will. And that's what I'm saying. If these people get on the videos and, and they want to ask sincere questions, then that's fine. But when just time after time, Y'all are trying to comment to them, and, and all they're doing is just keep getting a little bit more sarcastic. They get a little more mean with the way that they are coming off against y'all. Don't have time for them. <laughs> we just don't. I sure don't, and y'all shouldn't. Well, friend, I hope... You see, the words from God's word that we just went over right now is how we should live day after day after day. But if you get up in the morning, if you get up in the morning and you don't pray, you don't think about the Lord, 
you're just you're just getting busy going off to work going off to whatever and you don't have time for the lord in the morning you're too busy we we need to take time pray meditate talk to the lord he'll talk back to you trust me he will talk back to you if you will listen and if you will talk to him he will talk back to you the holy spirit will tell you things well friend god bless you again just remember email me at million for christ million there's no s in there million for christ at aol.com and if you want to be part of the million for christ school of ministry and it is 40 minutes into this video uh hopefully a lot of y'all will watch <laughs> to the end if you have just say hey i watched to the end and let me give you an update on the amount of money that's been raised uh so far it's a little over sixteen hundred dollars that's been raised so uh that is enough i yeah that will be enough to um get me started um provided that the gentleman and i believe he will excuse me um my goal is to is to make a show before the 23rd that's my goal so <laughs> lord I've, I've got a i've got I'm running out of time so this weekend I'm gonna try very hard to make a show uh, this weekend so anyway that's my goal and um, so yeah I appreciate everyone who has uh, sending donations uh, the most precious donation I got was from a dear lady and um, I'm just going to tell you, she, she sent me $5. And I'm telling you, when I got that, and, and you know, I, I, just, I just knew um, this lady. That's, that's about all she could, could give. And, you know, when someone gives you a donation like that, it made me think of the lady who put in the two mites. Other people, you know, give out of or gave out of their abundance. This lady gave all that she had. And that's why Jesus said <laughs> she gave a whole lot more than you guys. Oh, how can you say that? Because y'all gave out of your abundance. Y'all gave out of what was excess. She gave everything she had. Even though she had little, she gave it all. And friend, I'm going to tell you that $5 blessed me. And I mean that. It blessed me to see that someone would do that. And like I started this video, we must be ready for the rapture. But if by chance... If by chance we find ourselves still on this earth and we're all upset and we're heartbroken, God is still God. Our names are still written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And He is still coming back for us. It just wasn't this month. So what do we do on October the 1st? We still keep looking for him. And obviously there is still people that he wants you and I to share the gospel with, to bring with us when he does sound the trumpet. That's why it bothers me when somebody will say, well, I just don't understand, Asa. If you think the rapture's about to happen, why are you trying to start a TV ministry? Because there is 7 billion people on this earth. 
and a lot of them need to get saved. They need to hear the real message in God's word, not this mess that's coming out of the mouth of these people that tickle your ears. And I hope you agree with me. I really do. Because I know a lot of you do. Well, listen. I enjoyed the time that I had sharing this with you. And I just pray that you have a blessed night. God bless you.